know how my father um, managed to get us out. And we settled eventually first in Belgium, then in Amsterdam on a new part of the town um, called Merveda Plan. It was an open square with um, the children were able to play there after school. Because if you live in apartments, you have no garden for children to play. So it was the street. And um, so one day a girl came to me. She said, I think you are new here. And um, she introduced herself very politely, brought up. And it turned out to be Rosanna Frank. Of course, at that time, she was just one of my playmates. She didn't go in my school. I went to the local school. She went into a Montessori school. Mm. Uh, her older sister didn't. So later I realized her father, Otto, must have seen that she's a bit different. She needs more personal attention and so on. So, and she was different from all my other playmates. She was um, quite conceited in a way. She always wanted the attention of everybody around her. She was a good storyteller. She always assembled a group of kids and started to tell us stories. Mm. And um, she was very vain, her hair, her clothes, and I was a real tomboy. Mm. So we did really become good friends because she was quite opposite from who I was. Um, I didn't read. I had my brother who told me everything he read. I was very into sport. Um, we did sort of a game around us. I was always chosen. We did, I got a bicycle. I did tricks on, I played with the boys, um, wild games and so on. I played marbles and I was much more sophisticated. And, but nevertheless, you know, all the kids mixed. And then in the beginning, actually, she realized, was very friendly, that um, I couldn't speak very well Dutch. So she said, my father can speak German. So she took me to her apartment and I met her father, her sister and her mother. And yeah, we became sort of playmates. Of course, later, many, many, many years later, after my mother married her father, who became my stepfather, and even more important, the grandfather of my children, we had, of course, an amazing relationship together. And Otto talked continuously about Anne, not about Margot. He very often said, I really feel guilty. I had, after all, two daughters, but Anne is just with me all the time. So um, I learned a lot about Anne later through Otto. And so did my children. And that even till now caused a bit of a problem because um, he always talked about Anne, Anne, Anne to them. If they did something wrong, Anne would have done it this way. And so, and, but he never said who was Anne. You know, there was always this mystery about her in their apartment, photos everywhere about Anne. And, um, but he didn't say that it was my daughter who died, you know? Yeah. So um, it, it got a problem and he was, uh, everything what she did was perfect, you know? So I, I talk now with especially my youngest daughter and she said, you know, I never felt at ease. Um, it was a problem. So, yeah, so, and of course, <clears throat> we were in, in Amsterdam 1940, um, February 1940, and in um, 19, in May, Hitler invaded already. So I didn't really have a good time in Holland. The first few months, of course, was okay. They didn't do, there was no change, but then came the measures against the Jewish people mm -hmm. and it became very, very scary. Which leads